the first victim of Nazism were, were not the Jews, were not black people, were not gypsies, were not any of the other people that wound up in prison camps. It was Baby Nower because the scientists deemed that he couldn't really have a quality of life that meant anything, and so it would really just be the compassionate thing to do to go ahead and kill him. That's what the scientists decided. So let's not act as though, well, if we just had science that just took over the second that there was some kind of life or death situation, that everything would be all roses and sunshine and happy times. No, that's how you wind up in a tyrannical dystopian state. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content which will make America a better place, and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> and for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, someone I'm sure you didn't expect to see in this segment, Chris Rock. Now, full disclosure, I like Chris Rock. I'm a fan. It's kind of like the Ellen Page thing, just because I think that she's, you know, a mentally unstable person doesn't mean that I don't think she's a good actress in a few movies that she's been in. And uh, when it comes to Chris Rock, I actually really like Chris Rock. I like the show Everybody Hates Chris, which he was the, you know, the main character in, and he did the writing for that. I, I like some of his comedy routines. That one that he does where it's uh, how to not get your behind beat by the police, that's one of the funniest videos I've ever seen. And it's true. He actually does give some uh, weirdly good advice through the medium of comedy. And so... I don't hate Chris Rock, and to be a comedian, you've got to be a pretty clever person to be able to figure out ways to make people laugh, and so I don't think that Chris Rock is stupid all the time, but man, this was a pretty stupid, I mean, this is AOC levels of stupidity in this, and, and we, I know we're just coming off of a segment on AOC, but seriously, like, the things that he says here, incredibly dumb, he says that he wants a Supreme Court of Science. And so we're going to dig into this, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you about this before we, we go inside. I'm going to commit an argument of authority fallacy. And the reason that I'm going to do it is not because I agree with the fallacy. It's just because I'm doing it to illustrate how ridiculous Chris Rock's argument of, a, uh, of authority fallacy that he's about to commit is. So if I were to come into this saying, Look, what does Chris Rock know about science? He didn't even graduate high school. He dropped out of high school. He went on to do comedy. Now, I'm somebody that has a degree in science. I have a bachelor's of science from a major four-year university in Auburn. So I like to think I know a little bit more about science than Chris Rock. Now, those things are all true, but it's still an argument of authority. Just because somebody has a whole bunch of letters after their name or they have all these degrees, that does not make their argument good. That does not make them correct. They can be. Maybe they're more likely to be if they're an expert in the field, but it doesn't guarantee it. You can Right or wrongness does not depend on the amount of education that you have. If I walk up to somebody as someone who does not know anything about geometry other than what I learned in high school, and somebody who is a mathematician points at a triangle and says, that's a square, and I say, no, that's a triangle, it doesn't magically become a square just because the guy knows a lot more about geometry than I do. And so you see how the argument of authority fallacy works? And so here's what we're going to do, because Chris Rock is, is about to make a series of these, and uh, we'll go ahead and look at that. This is from Deadline in an interview he did with them talking about this. So he says, I would hope that Mr. Biden institutes some specific uh, scientific department like the Supreme Court of Science, just for the lack of a better name. It would be in charge of anything medical or environmental. All right, so this is dumb for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, this is stupid on just political grounds because obviously a president cannot make a branch of government. You see, the president is a branch of government. He is the executive branch. He cannot magically create a new branch of government. That would be something that would be a, an insanely difficult thing to do because it would require 
not just an amendment to the Constitution, even though that would be the baseline, but an incredibly detailed amendment to the Constitution to be able to change our federal structure. And so the idea that you could just make a, basically a department of science and make that one of the four branches of government, I guess, in this new weird uh, government system that Chris Rock is imagining in his brain. Uh, yeah, a president can't do that. You would have to have ratification from the states and everything that goes with having a constitutional amendment. So first of all, it's patently stupid to think that a president could do this. And just because Biden, I really do think the average person thinks the president can just do what they want. I think they think that the president is a dictator. That seems to be the contention of the average person. I don't know why this is, but uh, Chris Rock seems to be in that number. But the second part of that is it's also stupid on scientific grounds. The idea that you have a panel of scientists at the very top of the science hierarchy that decides what is science and what is not science, that's just dumb. Because the whole idea behind science is that it's constantly moving and changing and evolving. And that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, look at Galileo. Basically, they had a Supreme Court of Science in a very limited sense that dragged him before the court and said, uh, no, you're wrong, the Earth is the center of the universe and we're going to lock you in a tower because you refuse to say otherwise. See, that's what happens when you get a handful of people deciding what the science is. But Galileo was right. Sir Isaac Newton w was right. Just because their ideas were unconventional or what was not accepted by the science didn't mean they weren't correct. And that's how science continues to get better is by people walking up to the orthodoxy or what is commonly thought of as the correct thing and saying, mm, I don't think that's right. Let me do some experiments and see if it is. And, and sometimes they find out they're wrong and that's fine. That's the scientific method too. But the entire basis of the scientific method is skepticism and trial and error. You don't get to quash ideas just because you think that they might be wrong. In fact, that's actually a pretty good reason to experiment on them is you think that they might be wrong. Because if nothing else, you have learned and you have disproven that theory and you can write it off and move on. That's how science actually works. Chris Rock doesn't understand this, and unfortunately neither does the average person, because I think there's probably a lot of people, especially on the left, that would think this. What they really mean is, we want people in charge that will make sure that our science goes through. And that's why he ends that by saying that uh, in charge of anything medical or environmental. You notice that he doesn't add on there, oh, and also uh, fetal development. Why? Because the science there says that no, a baby is a human. That is a human baby. It has human cells that has a genetic signature completely unique, not the same as the mother's that it's living inside at the time. That, that would be a human baby. He knows he doesn't say uh, in regards to anything regarding to gender because the science there says, no, if there's an X chromosome, or sorry, if there's two X chromosomes, that's a female. If there's one, it's a male. You see, they don't want the science, even though I don't even think the science exists, they want their science. They want science that they agree with when it agrees with them as a means to push through their political agenda. And if you don't believe me, you need look no further than literally the very next sentence that Chris Rock utters in this particular uh, article. Basically, I would hope that the government instills a mechanism so that if there's ever anything environmental or medical, this mechanism would take over, thus eliminating politics out of a life and death situation. Oh gosh, that is the worst idea I have ever heard. And I do a political talk show. This place is just me debunking bad ideas literally all day long. And that may be one of the worst ideas I've ever... That may be the worst idea I've ever heard. This is where the worship of the science leads every single time. Tyranny. You know who was at the charge of the Holocaust? Scientists. Scientists believed 
that people with blonde hair and blue eyes were the genetic superiors of people like Jews or gays. Yeah, they, they thought that being gay was a sign that you were a genetic inferior and you had no evolutionary purpose because, you know, of course you aren't reproducing and, and creating kids, and so there's no need for you to be kept alive, and so we'll just kill you. Oh, and, you know, there was another group of people that the Nazi scientists didn't really like. Well, oh, yeah, it was people like Chris Rock, black people. They believed they were their genetic inferiors as well, and because of that, they could just, you know, execute them because they're not like real humans. That's why you don't worship science. Because scientists are not perfect. They're humans. They get things wrong. And when you start marrying science to politics, then things get really bad because then you get bad science and bad politics. You get science with essentially the force of law to test unproven theories on random innocent people. One of the first victims of Nazism was Baby Nauer. If you don't know who that is, go look him up sometime. It was a child with severe disability, and they had scientists come in and look at him. The first victim of Nazism were, were not the Jews, were not black people, were not gypsies, were not any of the other people that wound up in prison camps. It was Baby Nauer because the scientists deemed that he couldn't really have a quality of life that meant anything, and so it would really just be the compassionate thing to do to go ahead and kill him. That's what the scientists decided. So let's not act as though, well, if we just had science that just took over the second that there was some kind of life or death situation, that everything would be all roses and sunshine and happy times. No, that's how you wind up in a tyrannical dystopian state. And that's how it happens every time. Science and politics should stay separate. I know people often cite that there should be a separation of church and state. I think that what's far more important is a separation between politics and science, because when you merge those two together, horrible things tend to happen. And let's also not kid ourselves. There were plenty of American scientists that believed black people were inferior, and that's why the institution of slavery was okay especially the Darwinists that had abandoned the God-centered worldview and latched on to a secular one. That's what the science gets you, Chris Rock. You see, I care about Chris Rock. I, I care about him as a human being and as an individual, even if he weren't a famous comedian or somebody that was super rich. I care about him as a person, and that's why his idea of just letting the scientists take care of everything, that's one of the worst ideas that he could have possibly come up with. Science should never be political, and politics should never be run by science. Protecting individual God-given rights, that's the way. That is the way you make sure that everybody stays safe. You don't have scientists just take over every time there is some kind of crisis. That's not our constitutional system. The thing that stays secure and is our North Star is that every single individual matters. Because they are created in the image of God, and as image bearers of God, we have certain inalienable rights given to us by that Creator, and the government cannot trample upon those no matter what the science says. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.